Hello everyone, I'm Travel Kai and welcome to the EDH channel. Today's Patreon shoutout goes to Z. If you'd like to support the channel as well, then you can visit Patreon and donate with the link in the description below. Failing that, a like, comment and subscribe is always appreciated. Now, let's have a look at everyone's opening hands. Turn one, we get into another land, so we'll just throw down a tap land and looks like Strixhaven Stadium is gonna be our only means of ramp in the first few turns. No turn one plays from anybody, they just get down their tapped basics. Uh, we get another land in Undergrowth Stadium, so we'll throw down the Lightning Greaves. The first rock from Arkham Dagson is a fractured power stone. And deciding to roll the planar die, which as we all know is the most important part of Fractured Power Stone. So uh, let's see if we are changing planes. We are not. We're going to stay in the UK for now. Ruby Medallion coming down for kills and his Velo Marcus deck. Then a Fire Diamond for Joker Dean. And uh, there is a Grave Titan. Let's just throw down a basic and we'll go for the Strixhaven Stadium. Probably going for Yorgmoth next turn. Strixhaven Stadium is a new one from Strixhaven, obviously, and it's. Whenever anyone deals combat damage to us, we remove a point counter from it. Whenever a creature we control deals combat damage to an opponent, put a point counter on it, and if it has 10 or more on it, remove them all, and that player loses the game. We can put a point counter on it when we tap it for mana as well. And uh, There's a couple of things going on here in Mannequin, and an Everflowing Chalice with two counters on it, so that will tap for two mana. And this is a Dragon's Approach deck from Billy Kills, so those will only cost him two mana to cast. Thanks to the Ruby Medallion. Just going to tap down the Strixhaven now and put a point counter on that. And Talisman of Conviction for the Boros player, followed by Warm Power Stone, so a lot of ramp coming down this turn. A Cabal Coffers with not too many swamps, so we'll just continue to get down the other lands we've got. Don't have any tokens at the moment, but we'll throw down the Orgmoth's Will just as a blocker. And throw Shroud and Haste on that. Not going to bother swinging in at anyone for points. Because if we do that, the Mana King can just come in towards us anyway, so... If it's doing that, it's not tapping for mana. There's an argument to be made for us doing that. And they do immediately tap it for mana. Into a Gilded Lotus, four cards in hand. Now Voltaic Key, which can untap the Gilded Lotus, and that's exactly what they do. And there is the Arkham Dagson, so only two cards left in hand, but plenty of artifacts in play. And a Thought Vessel as well. Another Dragon's Approach from Kills, he's gone down to three cards in hand, does have three Dragon's Approaches in the bin now though. A kicked Skyclave Relic, I was worried about seeing Jorka Dean there, but seeing a Skyclave Relic come into play, that pretty much guarantees... Metalcraft for the rest of the game because these are indestructible and there are three of them so just leaving it there and it's round to our turn a Senge Autocrat I like more than tapping out for Grave Titans so let's drop a forest and go for the Senge Autocrat and then it's probably a good idea to get rid of this Arkham Dagson before they tap out we'll also draw some cards doing that as well so getting rid of the Arkham Dagson and I think I feel fairly safe swinging in here let's Let's go Singer Autocrat, swinging in at somebody. Let's just go in at Billy Kills, put another point on the Strixhaven Stadium. Then shove the Lightning Greaves back onto the Yorgmoth. Arkham Dagson being cast again by Gogo. -Go. And then rolling the Planar die again, most important part of the game. And once again staying in the UK. Then untapping the Fractured Power Stone. 
And again rolling the planar die. Alright, and a planeswalk symbol, so... Where are we going to planeswalk to? Another dragon's approach. <laughs> and another one, so we're going to see a dragon come into play here. And that is a Null Spine Dragon. Discard your hand and draw cards equal to the damage dealt to your opponents this turn. So that would be six, I think. So they discard two and draw six. And they had a couple more dragon's approaches in hand, and they've managed to make white now. Throw down a Sol Ring. The creatures starting to flow now, a Krenko Tin Street Kingpin and a Dark Steel Plate coming into play for more indestructible metal craft and that will likely go on to Krenko. I was wondering if we go for the Grave Titan next turn, whether we swing here or here. Likely that we're going to go in at Arkham Dagson now that the Krenko is indestructible and they actually can't activate the Endless Atlas until they get another mountain or another couple of planes. Okay, Grave Pact along with Ashnod's Altar is really nice. Let's throw down the Nurturing Peatland. Uh, hmm. Yeah, we could go for Ashnod's Altar and the Grave Pact and keep these creatures in check at this point. Uh, yeah, so let's go for the Ashnod's Altar. And the blue player does have blue mana held up, but doesn't look like priority is being held, so... Perhaps doesn't have any counter magic. So let's throw down the Grave Pact here. And then we'll try to get some point counters distributed here. Uh, that can go in at Go Go. And that can go in at Billy Kills. And then if they decide to block, we can sacrifice in response anyway. Alright, deciding not to block, so we do get some free points here. As well as some free damage, of course. So we're on 7 now. And I think I would like to draw some cards as well as lose the Arkham Dagson before they untap. So so let's go minus counter onto the Arkham Dagson because they're probably going to sacrifice the Milliken. If they sacrifice the Arkham Dagson, then it actually counters the Orgmoth. And I'd like to try and draw a card here. But it looks like they are choosing the Arkham Dagson in response. So... We'll probably just leave the Sengir Autocrat in play, just so that we can keep putting counters on the Strixhaven. Yeah, we'll leave it there. We'll also be able to wrap up other creatures in the Grave Pact to Nashnod's Altar, if we leave the Sengir Autocrat in play, that is. Bunch of mana being generated by the Mono Blue player, and still a bunch of mana available. But playing out the Arkham Dagson again and passing by the looks of it. Then the Millikin coming in towards us to take a point counter away from the Strixhaven. Putting our opponents in a tricky spot here. Vela Marcus coming into play though. We can get rid of that easily enough. If it swings in at us, I will sacrifice the Sengir Autocrat. Don't like being at 19 life. Okay, and there's a Locket of Yesterdays. Got that in my Dragon's Approach deck because it will make them really cheap to cast. So they could go for a Dragon's Approach for only one mana here after this comes in. And I'm not confident that this isn't going to swing in at me, so I'm just going to sacrifice the Sengir Autocrat now. I'll put the counter on the Arkham Dagson again to try and draw a card. And they do sacrifice their Arkham Dagson again to keep us from drawing a card there. And there's the Dragon's Approach, so we go down to 15. Tenza, Godo's Maul. Uh, plus one, plus one if it's legendary, plus two, plus two, and Trample. So that's obviously ready for their Jorka Dean, which they might be playing out here. But just deciding to wait until the Grave Pact is dealt with. So we're successfully slowing players down quite nicely here. Alright, and there's a Wooded Foothills, so we'll go for a Jewel Land, just so that the Cabal Coffers is one step closer to not being completely useless. Down to 14 life though. And let's go Grave Titan this turn, I think. We can give it haste and get even more tokens into play. And Billy Kills is at the highest life total, so I think we'll swing in at him. Uh, we can swing in the Yorgmoth as well. 
Yeah, we'll go Grave Titan in at Billy Kills, Yorgmoth in at Greedo. Uh, and then we'll have three zombies sacrifice tap out into Belladros. I think that's okay. It's a good job Go Go hit us before because otherwise someone will be going out of the game here. Strixhaven Stadium adding a real clock. So next turn we might be able to take someone out with that. Sacrifice these zombies for mana, finally getting rid of that Milliken. And then we'll see about getting this Belladros down. It does come down through the blue mana. So we'll put the Haste and Shroud onto that and I think we can pass the turn there. Hopefully start gaining some life with these pest tokens. Good that we've got a sack outlet for them that we can gain life with if we're desperate. Bunch more mana being made with the Voltaic Key. Arkham Dagson coming down yet again. It's my experience that if you can keep Arkham Dagson out of the game in the Arkham Dagson list, then it slows them right down. They have to hard cast all the big artifacts. Doing a good job of staying in mana over there, though. There's another Dragon's Approach. Uh, I think they'll need one more and then they'll be able to fish out a dragon. One card left in hand. Uh, not casting anything else, just leaving that one card in hand, so time to see if Greedo has anything. Endless Atlas can now be activated, so drawing a card over there with the three mountains in play. And an austere command, destroying all enchantments and all creatures with power 4 or greater, or CMC 4 or greater. So, we're losing everything except our tokens really. Yeah, it's a shame I didn't hold up the Tender Pests here. In fact, we can draw some cards with Yorgmoth, so let's put a Minus Counter on the Grave Titan, sacrifice the Belladros, get into Baleful Mastery, which might be useful. Um, put a Minus Counter on a Zombie, sacrifice the Grave Titan, just to draw another card. Alright, and a uh, Marsh Flitter is good for making a lot of tokens. Need to get into our aristocrat effects, really. And then Artless, Mask of Memory. Draw two cards and discard a card whenever you hit someone with the equipped creature. So Greedo down to zero cards in hand, but might be able to refill over the next few turns. All right, Skull Clamp is really good. So uh, let's take someone out with the Strixhaven Stadium, I think. We'll just swing in with the Pest Tokens. That is one point of damage to everyone. And I think we'll take out Billy Kills here because he's got the highest life total. So first time ever playing Strixhaven Stadium and I think we're going to be able to actually make use of it this game, surprisingly. Yeah, really worried about Billy Kills and his direct burn and the fact that he's at the highest life total. Oh, and uh Yeah, see this is my first time playing this and I'm not sure how it works. I did question this at first, then if it has 10 or more counters on it, remove them all and that player loses the game. So does it go around in turn order? I thought it had asked me. Because it's hit all the players at once. Yeah, so we're not entirely sure how that works, it must go around in turn order. So uh, Billy Kill still has a chance to take us out here. If I'd known that I would have just swung one pest in at Billy Kills. I wanted to keep as many counters on that as possible. Which we did manage to do, but didn't manage to take out the player I wanted to, unfortunately. Let's throw ourselves down a Skull Clamp. And equip Skull Clamp to Pest. A Mana Reflection I don't care for at the moment. I really want an Aristocrat effect here. Uh, okay, I'll take a Woodland Cemetery. Just drop that down. Uh, go for another Skull Clamp. So we get back up to 11, there's Doubling Season, a Maldivine Reclamation as well to gain more life and draw more cards. Uh, I think we'll go for the Marsh Flitter here just so that I've got a Flying Blocker because I'm worried about a Hasty Dragon coming into play. And then we'll put the Lightning Greaves onto the Marsh Flitter so that there's no spot removal on that and we'll pass. <laughs> now a Mana Geyser from Billy Kills. And there is Velo Marcus. I don't like the idea of them getting a free spell here, so I think I'm going to have to go for Baleful Mastery. Going to make Velo Marcus unblockable. I want them to use as much mana as possible and go through to the beginning of combat. Alright, let's go for the Baleful Mastery here. Go for that onto the Velo Marcus and hopefully, I mean they've got a lack of white mana so 
It's not like there's any protection or anything. Just trying to slow everyone down as much as possible at this point. You now, Joker Dean, the Prevailer, no haste yet that I'm seeing. They do have Trample on the Tenza though, indestructible with the Dark Steel. So, fully suiting up the Joker Dean. And let's see what we can draw into this turn. Doubling Season will affect the Strixhaven. Uh, we can go for Malakiri Birth. Onto the Marsh Flitter, maybe. Yeah, let's put Lightning Greaves on the Goblin Rogue. And we'll put the Malakir Rebirth onto the Marsh Flitter so that it'll come back into play. Uh, then we can go for Doubling Season, I think. Sacrifice the Goblin Rogue. Gets us up to five mana. We'll go Doubling Season. Then we can go Tend the Pests as well. Sacrifice the Marsh Flitter. Yeah, so just trying to get as many pests into play as possible. Going for the Tend the Pests onto this before we sacrifice it. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if there's much that we can really do here. We'll go for haste on a Goblin Rogue. Tap down the Strixhaven. That'll make five counters on that. We'll go for clamp onto a Rogue. And that draws us a couple of cards. Nadia is nice, but yeah. It's too little too late here, I think. I imagine the Joker Dean is going to take us out. But just for the fun of it. Yeah, probably should have gone Beast Within onto the Dragon previously. I was wondering if the Exile was relevant. Should have gone Beast Within onto there. And then we could have exiled this. That would have been a better idea. But hey-ho. Attack Billy kills. We'd still be one point away. If we could go wide on the Boros player as well, we'd still only be at nine counters, so don't think it particularly matters doing it this way. So let's just sacrifice that now that it's tapped. Go for a Skull Clamp on there. Uh, Sky Shroud Claim, all right. Yeah, if we get Nadia into play, we'll have to sacrifice all the tokens in order to do it is the problem. Haven't gotten into any of our aristocrats, which is really hurting us here, and now we're getting into a chunk of ramp, which we could have done with before now. So maybe we do just go for the Nadia. Try and make it big enough to block the Joker Dean. So we'll play that. And we'll just take another point of damage here. So that we can skull clamp the Nadia. Just take a toughness away from it, so maybe shouldn't do that. But I think we're going down to the Joker Dean next turn anyway. We'll go up to 9 points when we lose the Pests. Now another Dragon's Approach and I think they'll be able, yeah, they should be able to get a Dragon into play here. So a Hasty Dragon ought to be able to take us out. We don't have any coloured mana available to us now. So even if we'd gone for the Exile on Joker Dean it might be that Billy Kills is able to take us out here anyway. And that is a <laughs> Terror of the Peaks, one of the best Dragons in the game at this point. So, if he just hard casts a big dragon here, that'll be us done for. Hey, <laughs> Hellkite Tyrant. Uh, that is when it deals combat damage, so no haste. But that's probably Greedo's worst nightmare. And it will be 6 damage directly to us. So just for the fun of it, let's sacrifice some pests. That'll gain us life, put plus counters on Nadia. Makes the other two players worry a little bit as well. So you can see how the deck would have run a lot better for us. We got four plus counters on the Nadia there, thanks to the doubling season. And we'll get double the counters here, or double the um, tokens. So we get a bunch of tokens with the Nadia, and if there's something like a Blood Artist or a Zulaport Cutthroat or an uh, Anya wouldn't work here, but yeah, you see all the tokens that we get there, that's, uh, yeah, that's a hell of a lot for us, but unfortunately... We're nowhere close to drawing into any of it, unfortunately. Just got into Necropotence and the forest there. So, nothing we can do. We will just take the damage. Hurt a little bit by having the Cabal Coffers as well, although it didn't really hurt us. We just played it at the end there. Maybe if we'd had the forest instead of the Cabal Coffers, then we could have blown up the Terror of the Peaks instead. And that would have kept us in the game, but... Like I said, just drawn into things in slightly the wrong order there, but it was still a strong showing for Belladro, so I'm happy with that. Now, can Greedo do anything about that Hellkite Tyrant? A Reforge the Soul. Each player discards and draws seven. 
Might have just given Billy Kills a swords or a path. Oh, Naginata for more buffs and trample. And equipping that, tapping out his white lands to do it. And a fervent champion as well, I don't think Greedo's going to be able to do it here. He'll need double strike, really. So just swing it in with the Jorkadine. There is nine toughness between the dragons here. He might just take the damage directly. I'd probably leave those dragons in play personally. Although there is instant speed double striking stuff in red, so yeah, <laughs> he drew him into a swords anyway. I'd be interested to see if Greedo had any means of giving double strike at instant speed. Uh, a dispatch going on to his own commander, so he doesn't even care about gaining the life at this point. I think handing it over to Billy Kills, letting him know that he's got it. And if he doesn't gain the life, then Billy Kills is more likely to actually get the game next turn. Yeah, he's told us in the chat that he just got five lands with the wheel. Like I already said, he was probably hoping for some form of double strike there, but it wasn't to be this one. I don't think I've ever actually seen Hellkite Tyrant steal a bunch of artifacts. It's a shame that the game's already won when he's doing it. So just swinging in with the two of them, Kills now has six cards in hand thanks to that wheel. Stealing all the artifacts away. So Greedo is sent down to one and left with just some lands and a fervent champion. And there is the dragon's approach to finish him off. So the Bella Marcus law hold not being able to swing in all game, but dragon's approach dealing a lot of damage there. I didn't actually total it up, but yeah, there was a lot of dragon's approaches cast there. So lots and lots of lightning bolts sent us all plummeting down to around the early 20s. And even able to steal some artifacts away towards the end of the game there with the Hellkite Tyrant. So hopefully you all enjoyed this one. Be sure to let me know if you did in the comments section below. Big thank you to GoGo, Go, Bootleg Greedo and Billy Kills for supporting monetarily on Patreon. You can do that as well if you like through the link in the description below. I'm Travel Kai on the EDH channel. Thank you for watching.